Amen. God is so good. His mercies are everlasting. So, Father, we just thank you today. We give you praise for the privilege uh, to be able to come before the people of God today and uh, share a word in season, God, because no matter what we go through in life, there's always a word from the Lord to help us to, uh, to uh, we always have trials in life. Trials is going to be part of life. He said in this world, you're going to have tribulation. So when you always give us a word in season that help us to get through things in life. Amen. So we're going to start off with prayer today. And Father, we just want to thank and praise and give you glory today. Give you the honor. Amen. Let's do your name. We worship you and praise you in the name of you. We pray that you open our ears to hear, to, to see our heart. To understand what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us through the word of God in Jesus' name. God, we give you praise and we give you glory for this right now. If you would today, I, um, God put on my heart um, today to uh, go from the book of Joshua. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Joshua. And it's something because we have Bible uh, study that we're going through the Zoom. And I told our people, I said, um, at near the end, I said, Lord, put on my heart to read, tell you to read Joshua chapter one. Little did I know that the Holy Spirit is going to have me teach on Joshua chapter one. So whoever, all, all y'all read, uh, did your assignment, amen? Joshua chapter one, we started verse one. So that after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land, which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given to you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness in Lebanon, even to the great Euph uh, river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Be strong and have a good courage for unto this people so I divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear to their fathers to give them. Only be uh, strong and very courageous, and that you may observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may uh, prosper in, in wherever you go. This book of the law shall part out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do all according uh, that is written therein. Well, you, then, then you shall make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through and the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for in three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go and to possess the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess. Lord, let the word of free course be glorified. We bind every spirit of hindrance in Jesus' name. Amen. God, you're so good. You're so great, and your mercy is everlasting. Now, when you read um, the first um, chapter, amen, of the book of Joshua, we learn, we begin to uh, realize that, number one, God's people have just come to, a, to the close of, a, of an old era. And two, they, they are now entering into a brand new era. And that's what you, that's the first thing you pick up when you read the first chapter. An old era has just ended and a new era has just begun. Now, um, like I said, this past Wednesday, we Lord gave me a word to uh, give an assignment to read the book of Joshua, I mean, the first chapter of Joshua. Now, an era <clears throat> can be described as a new time and season that's different and distinct from the former times and seasons, amen? So, you know, the Bible says there's a there's a time, there's a season for every purpose under the heaven. And um, so when you go from one era to another area, that means you, you know, you go to one, uh, one uh, way of doing things uh, to another way. Now, God's people, the old era was Moses' day was the wilderness. It was a time of preparation, amen? And the time of deliverance, they were delivered out of um, Egypt, the slave labor camps of Egypt. And they were brought into the wilderness because God had a, a special place for them, a special plan, uh, great promises for them, but they weren't ready for them. So God had an, an era or time of season where they would be prepared uh, to go into this place that God had prepared for them. Amen. When you come out of out of darkness, you're not ready to go into the promised land. You got a lot of stuff for you, a lot of baggage. So God was letting that time, that era of the wilderness, a time of preparation. 
And you know, it's it supposed to be for time, wasn't supposed to be easy, but it was true teaching to learn that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. So, but they, you know, they made it longer than what it should have been. You know, they sinned and did all kind of crazy stuff, and they delayed and hindered uh, their time in the wilderness. And so, with disobedience, can hinder your time um, and slow your time and your time of preparation. Amen. So make sure you're not living in disobedience. Amen. With God for your life. Now, here in the first chapter of the book, uh, we see that uh, the era of the wilderness it, it comes to an end. Amen. That the era is, you know, everything is God moves in cycles, He moves in times, He moves in seasons. So there's going to be different times in your in your life when God has, okay, this time and season, this era has ended. I'm about to bring it to a whole a new era. Now, God is, I believe, He's moving the whole body of Christ into a brand new era as, as one body. Amen. A whole new era. Let's read verse two. Let's see what I'm talking about. God, you're so good. <clears throat> he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, rise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people to the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. So he starts off by saying, Moses, my servant is dead. In other words, the heir of the wilderness has now come to an end. It has come to a close. Amen. So Moses is off the scene. Things are totally different now. It's a totally different look now. Amen. And everybody's like, what's going to happen now? Uh, Moses is not here anymore. Uh, what's going on, God? And, and sometimes when you something changes in, the, in your life, you don't know what you're about to do. A lot, a lot of times fear in, uh, you know, kind of what am I going to do, God? And so God was trying to calm uh, Joshua down and the children of Israel because of, uh, just because when Aaron ends, don't mean it's over. As it means a new chapter in God's book for your life has, uh, has just come. Hallelujah. Um, God, you're, you're so great. You're good. You're, you're so awesome. Amen. And I sense God wants to talk to us today. He wants us to, you know, think we're dealing with stuff right now. Uh, we're looking at all the coronavirus and all the stuff happening and people saying, what is going on, God? And God wants you to calm down. Amen. God has not forsaken you. Amen. So God tells, he tells um, Joshua in the midst of this new change here and the children of Israel arise and pass over the Jordan River to possess the land which he promised you. So God said in the midst of all this, it's time to not to lay down, not to not to lay down and quit, but rise up. I want you to pass over some things. It may, I, I want you to begin to inherit your promises in the midst of all this, it's like this chaotic change, amen? So God was saying, it's time to enter in to a new era, amen? So the title of my message today is this here. It's crossing over into a new era, crossing over into a new era. So that's my title today, crossing over into a new era. God is so good. Hallelujah. And notice how they had to pass over the, the river Jordan to the other side to uh, and begin inheriting their promised land. You know, remember Jesus, we read, we talked about uh, last week uh, on two different occasions, Jesus Christ told his disciples to uh, get into a boat and pass over the sea to the other side. Amen. And we said passing over to the other side represents leaving the old era and crossing over to a new era. Amen. It, where you, you'll find a new era, you'll find new doors of opportunity, uh, greater levels of glory, new types of blessing, and you'll find that the manifestation of, of new promises about to come to pass. And I believe in the midst of all this turmoil, God is talking to those people to arrive, pass over, and you're going to find uh, new doors of opportunity in your life, uh, greater levels of glory, uh, new types of blessing, and you're going to find that certain promises You've been waiting for it for a long, long time, about to come into manifestation. Amen. So don't get discouraged when you see uh, winds of, of adversity. Amen. That's going to be a sign that you're on the right track, and the devil sees that. They're trying to uh, raise up a wind. Amen. To get you frightened. Amen. And to turn back. Amen. Glory to God. God is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. So in, in Jesus' day, he, when he went to the other side, what happened? A contrary wind rose up. It was trying to stop them from reaching what their destination. Now, 2 Thessalonians 2 4 says this here. It said that Satan opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and that is worship. He, he opposes and he exalts himself above all that is called God and all that is worship. Amen. Now, Satan is, is anti Christ, he's anti God, and he's anti Christian. He tries to stop and whatever you're doing, whatever God's trying to do on the earth, he tries to stop it. Amen. He's a very devious being, amen? Very, that's why he's called the devil. He's a devious being, amen? He'll do anything to try to stop uh, God's movement in the earth, amen? Including releasing a plague of disease upon the earth to try to stop 
uh, we think, okay, it's just, we're looking at the outside thing, but this is just a plague uh, of, of disease that normally comes to the earth, amen, and it's killed people. We, we, we pray about that, but it's more than that. The devil is using that it's as kind of him to, his main thing is to shut down all the churches, the body of Christ in the earth, because he senses that God angels are in the earth, and we're about to move to a new era uh, in, in the body of Christ, a new era of power and glory, opportunity. So he's doing, he's using this here for the natural realm to bring fear upon the governments to shut everything down. But his, his thing is he wants to shut the church down from coming together. So we need to see we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's more a spiritual warfare, amen, between, between, between good and between evil, between God and between the devil, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But how many know that the devil is not big enough or bad enough to stop God in his plans and purposes from coming to pass? He might think he's big enough, but he's not big enough and bad enough to stop God's plan. Who can stop the Lord God Almighty? He can't stop him, man. As a matter of fact, he's about to be crushed under our feet very soon. Amen. So he just he just overplayed his hands. Amen. Uh, when God said, when he comes to get you one way. I will cause the devil to flee seven ways. So get get your mindset. Okay, he came against us one way with all this coronavirus and the shutdown. Get ready for him to flee out of your life and out of our nation. Amen. Seven ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God would always have the last laugh. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God laughs at the devil and said, because he sees the day is coming. One day to be crushed under our feet. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So God's about to do some great things in the earth that have never been seen before. Amen. Man, and the devil knows it. He's getting very nervous. He's trembling in fear. He's running around with, a, with like a chicken with his head cut off. Amen. Trying to stop it. Amen. He's going. He's going berserk because he, he know that God's. He's about to get crushed. Uh, many are about to be brought out of his darkness, and many are going to kill the kingdom of God. Amen. He loves to keep people in bondage. Amen. And in darkness, but God has a plan that He's planned long ago, and is bringing that purpose. And nobody, no devil, no person, no man, no nation can stop what God has planned. For our lives, amen. Amen. And let's look what God says about those who try to oppose his plans and purposes on the earth. Look at verse 5 of Joshua 1. Amen. It said, There shall no not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor will I forsake you. So God has said, No, said to, to Joshua, no man, amen, or no, to us. Put it this way, he said the job, but no man or devil will be able to stand before us or oppose us or stop us. Amen. In other words, the devil uses people, but the devil's behind it. So God said, listen, there's no man, no devil can stop. They can stand against you to stop you from doing what I called you to do. Amen. So don't get full of fear and worry. God is with you. Amen. Then God told Joshua, he said that my, I will be with you. As I was with Moses, the same spirit that was upon Moses will be with you. Now, God says to us in the New Testament, as I was with Jesus, so will I be with you. So Jesus is our Lord and our master. Amen. He's our example. Amen. And he went to, he went to, he, he died on the cross like Moses had died. Amen. And he died on the cross. And like, man, where is Jesus? Where are, what's going to happen once Jesus leaves? Amen. But uh, Jesus said, no. And God is saying to us, listen, you know, it's, Jesus, it's important that I go away. If I don't go away, you, you, I won't, you can't have the Holy Spirit. So he said, I'm going to go away, amen? And the same spirit that was upon me, amen, is going to be upon you. As I, and he said, he said this in John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I said to you, he that believes on me, the works that I do. So you do also an even greater works, amen? Because I'm going to the Father. I'm praying the Father to send the same Holy Spirit that was in me, on me, and with me to be in you, with you, and on you. So we should not fear. Amen. So he said to us, as I was with Jesus back 2,000 years ago, with my power, with my spirit, I will be also with you. Amen. Glory to God. So we need to take heart. Amen. From these scriptures. Amen. Glory to God. Same Holy Spirit. Amen. And he said the same works that I do. So you do what also in even greater works. Well, how am I going to do the works? Well, Christ always said, I never, the works I do is not me. It's the Holy Spirit in me of the Father that's doing the works. Well, he's coming back in you, the spirit of Christ, to continue the works he did and take it to a, a greater level. Amen. We're not doing the works, but he's doing the works through us because why sin has gotten so bad. We are like the days of Noah when everybody has corrupted themselves on the earth. And a man got so bad that they look no longer like God's image. They look more, and more like the devil's image. And God was sorry. He made man. Man had gotten so wicked. And this is where we are heading right now 
in our society. So God wants us as his people not to take on the same image, but come out from among that way of living, amen, and be separate, amen. Say the Lord God. And I said, I will receive you to myself. I will become your father and you will be my son and daughter. What does that mean to be a father? Well, as I was a father to Jesus, amen, when he prayed to me, amen, I answered him, amen. I will pour up my spirit upon my children, amen. So God is saying the same thing here. Do not be like the world, amen. I want you to be separate from the ways of thinking. Be friends the Lord to bring him into Christ, but be separate from the evil ways, amen. And I will pour up my spirit and I will be with you just as I was with the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Now, God goes on to tell Joshua this here. He said, I will not fail you, nor will I forsake you. Amen. I will not fail you, nor will I forsake you. This is something that we, as the people of God, need to grasp in this final day, that God will not fail you, and he will not forsake you. How many know, God, how many know that God is not a failure? God has never failed at anything. He never will. He never has. He never will fail at anything. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what God says in the Bible. He says, God is not a man that he should lie. Either he is the son of man that he should repent or change his mind on what he says. He said, if he said it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he will make it good in your life. So God cannot, it's impossible for God to fail. All things are possible with God. He's not a liar. So God said, I will not, I will, I will not fail you, nor will I leave you. I'm not going to get, when you're going through trouble, I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm not like the, uh, the, you know, the wolf coming and the harlot and take off and leave. I'm going to stay with you in trouble. And I'll be with you even stronger in trouble, and I will deliver you out of your trouble. So why are we fearing? Why are we acting like the world? Amen. We have a God that will never leave us, a God who will not fail us. He will stick to us all the way to the end. Amen. He said, I got, I'm a covenant keeping God. I look, I watch over my promises. I what? What? To perform them in your life. So he's not a failure. He don't want to say, God's not a failure. He does not want you to fail. How do you fail? You don't fail just because you fall down. You fail when you quit and refuse to get back up, amen, through fear and, and turning back, amen. So God said, I won't fail you, neither will I leave you. I'll be with you always, what, even until the end of the earth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's a good thing, amen. That's a good thing. You need to say to yourself, you need to say, God, you will not fail me, amen. You won't forsake me. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord, amen. Glory to God. I can hear somebody saying right now, Okay, why is it then okay that I seem like I'm I'm failing in life? I'm like I'm, I'm a failure. I can't. I keep stumbling out. I, I can't never make it. I can't never get. I can't even get God's promises manifested in my life. Why am I failing all the time? If, if God said I won't fail you, you know what, what's what's going on with my life right now? Well, how I many know we have a part to play? You know, God's not doing the whole thing. We're partners with God. So God has a part to play. He'd be faithful to his part, but we have a part to play. So if, if you're failing, don't blame God for your failures. Amen. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me, Lord. Amen. So let's look at, um, jo jo matter of fact, Joshua 1, uh, verses 6 to 7. God tells Joshua that he has to do two things. He said, number one, be strong. Be strong. In other words, um, um, the Bible says, be strong in the Lord where? And in the power of of his might. Amen. Let, let us read this. Joshua uh, 6. Be strong and of a good courage. But to this people shall you divide and afford an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give you. Verse 7. Only be thou uh, strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all that is the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. So God tells us, first of all, you got to be strong, Joshua. He's telling us right now, you got to be strong. We're fighting an enemy that's, uh, the Bible calls him a strong man. Uh, we got principalities, powers, rules in the darkness of this world. Fallen angels used to be with God. They're, these are demonic power. You can't fight demonic powers if you're weak in the things of God. Jesus told them in the book of Revelation, the church of Sardis, he says, strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. We got a lot of Christians are very feeble and weak in their spiritual life. Amen. Uh, there's like it's like a a, a person in, who never eaten too long much, never lifted weights, and they're trying to fight somebody that 250 pound guy who bench presses 500 pounds. You get thrown over the mat. Amen. So God has said we we have we've got we're very weak and we're feeble. We're not strong in our spirit. Amen. And we're trying to fight an opponent who's who's been like like Goliath. Strong and very, he's very witty. He knows he's very devious and very cunning. Amen. He caused a third of the angels to fall. And we're trying to fight against him when we're weak in the spirit. So he said, Listen, you're going to be strong in this battle. Amen. I got plans for you. I want to prosper you. I want to bring you to the place I planned for you, but you're going to have an enemy to fight against him. You can't fight against an enemy when you're weak. Amen. It says, If you faint, you quit in the day of battle, that means your strength is small. 
So God is saying, be strong. Amen. Strengthen the things that remain. He said that are ready to die. Amen. So God, that's a word right now. Whatever things in your, you have with God, if you got things that you got in God and you, you find a weakening in your life, it's time to strengthen those things in God. Amen. Because the battle is raging. It's getting strong. It's time to lift up some spiritual weights. Amen. And get strong in the Lord. Get strong. Amen. In the power of his might. God not only told me to be strong, he said also, Joshua, you need to be very courageous. Amen. You need to get your strength up, sure. You have to fight, but you also need to be very courageous. God knows some very strong people physically, they're not very courageous. I mean, they got lifted weight. You see muscles bulging out of there, but something happened. They take they're the first one to take it off and running, even though they got strength because they lack courage. So you can't just have to be strong. You have to be very courageous as well in this last day. Amen. What is courage? Courage is the ability to face danger or hardships with confidence. So it's, it's like, you know, you're going to have dangerous stuff. Look, I'm very dangerous. Uh, a lot of um, hardships. And you got to look at this thing. You say, am I going to be fearful? Am I going to run? Or am I going to face this danger? Am I going to face it with confidence? Amen. And God is with me. He said, I'll, I'll never leave you. I'll be with you. I won't fail you. You should have confidence. Amen. To stand like David did when everybody was running from Goliath. He had courage. And the face of this 10 foot giant, amen. Courage, amen. To face him, amen. To face him and speak back to him and run toward him. So, God said, We're going to need not just to be strong, we're going to need some courage, not a little courage, but to be very courageous in this last day because we're going to see a lot of danger, a lot of hardships that's going to come in the earth in this last day. As a matter of fact, 2 Timothy 3 1 says, But understand this that in the last days will come, will set in perilous and dangerous times of great stress and trouble. Hard to deal with and hard to bear. That's Second Timothy three, three one. So it prophesied that the day we live in, we're, we're at dangerous times are coming. Uh, great stress, amen. Great trouble, hard to deal with and to bear in your natural strength. So God said, "You get my strength on you, amen." And be very courageous. You can stand and overcome it and face the danger with confidence, amen. In this last day, amen. Not just face the danger, but I'm gonna in the midst of the danger, midst of the storm, I'm gonna cause you to pass over. And inherit some great blessings in the midst. Because David said that God is able to in the, the prepared table before us right in the presence of our enemies. And it says in the book of Psalms that we are to rule in the rule in the midst of our enemies. So God is saying we're not to be the weak ones. Amen. We're called to be an army of God from heaven. Amen. And God said we got an army. Amen. To be strong. Put on the whole armor. It says later on in this book that the mighty men of they were armed. And mighty men of valor, of courage, amen. So God wants to be mighty men and mighty women of valor, of courage and strength, amen. Stand against the wiles of the devil, amen, and overcome because what? You're fighting to obtain an inheritance. You're fighting to obtain a promise, amen. You're fighting to attempt to, to um, be as, as God's fishers of men, to strike the net out there and to draw them into the kingdom of God. So God wants to use you. <clears throat> he wants to bless you to become a blessing of the people, amen. Somebody say God is good, amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> I can hear somebody now. How do I get this type of courage? How do I get this type of strength in my life? Because I don't feel very courageous right now. I don't feel too strong right now. As a fact, I feel kind of weak. And I feel like the, the lion in the Wizard of Oz, you know, he the lion, but he was, you know, he lacked the courage. He needed some heart to have courage. And God, how do I get this kind of courage in my life? Because it looks pretty bad, God. I want to run sometime. I just want to just lay down and faint, God. But being honest, amen. But how do I get this courage? I need in this strength in my life, amen. Well, God goes on and tells us exactly how to get this type of strength and how to get this type of courage in our life, amen. Look at Joshua 1 8. It says, This book of the law, the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth. So the first thing he's saying here is that, you know, you got to get my words. In your mouth, when you feel like being afraid, what the Bible says, what time I'm afraid, I'm gonna trust in you. He said, David said in one of the Psalms, when I'm afraid, I'm gonna praise your word, amen. When my enemy comes, when I feel like I'm afraid and I feel danger coming, I'm gonna and they come against me, I'm gonna put your word in my mouth and I'm gonna praise what your word says about my situation, amen. Because the word of God is alive and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two edged sword. And the Bible said, when you get the word of God in your mouth, it's like a sharp sword, amen, going out of your mouth, amen. It's called the sword of the spirit. And that's one of your weapons you have because the enemy can't stand the word of God. And that's what Jesus did in the wilderness when he tempted him and tested him. Amen. And he, he always he always said 
It is written. He always brought the word of God out of his mouth. Amen. And so God said, you got to keep the word, not words of fear out of your mouth, not repeating what you see on the news. Amen. But speak, repeat what the word of God says in the midst of your trouble. Amen. Because God said, I will not fail you. I won't forsake you. Amen. But he needs you to be in line with his word. You got to speak. The same thing that God is speaking. How can two walk together except they agree? If you're speaking one thing and God saying something else, you're not in, in agreement there. Amen. So God says, speak what I say, no matter what you feel. Amen. Hold fast. Come on to the confession of your faith without wavering, because God is faithful. Amen. So your words are very important. You're justified by your words. Amen. Or you're condemned by your words. The life and death is in the power of the tongue. So that's why Christ said your words are so powerful that if you say into a mountain, Represent hindering things or demonic spirit or things that are blocking you. You say to a mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and not doubt in your heart. But believe the things you say will come to pass. You will have everything you say. So he said, Joshua, it's the first thing how to be strong, be very courageous. As first of all, don't let my words depart out your mouth. Secondly, he said, Well, but you shall meditate in my word day and night. Oh, there's the key here. A lot of people are quoting scriptures, but the word has not gotten into the heart. So they're just speaking something out of it because they're like a parrot, just speaking something. A parrot can talk and speak things, but you can't. The parrot don't know what he's talking about. He just parroting what somebody else said. A lot of Christians are just quoting words, you know, I'm blessed, highly favored of God, saying all good, but it's not in their heart. They're just repeating something because it sounds all good to say. And and because you can see when things are hitting, when the rubber hits the road, they're taking off running and they're saying one thing at their mouth, you know, next thing something doubt come out their mouth. That means that word is not in the heart, it's gotten to the head. So God said, the way you get that word in your heart, you meditate on it day and night to just ingrained into your spirit. Amen. It becomes a part of you, amen, part of your being, amen. So when you speak. You're speaking with boldness. You're speaking with confidence. Amen. And you're speaking with a, with a substance called faith out of your mouth. Amen. And when you speak, it's like fire and a sword going out of your mouth. Amen. So God said, meditate my word. Because think about this here. Every day we we end up, uh, we got so much all around us. We got the news media. This constantly the negative. Amen. And news, you know, the news, they're not trying to help you. They know that uh, negative news and fear sells. And sometimes a lot of times they're lying now. Amen. That's why they call it fake news. A lot of it's lying to get their ratings up. So you cannot focus on the news all the time. Sure, get informed. But God says that's not the truth. Amen. It might be some facts and some lies in there. But God said, my words are truth. Amen. My word is a truth about if you want to know how things are really are, get into the word of God. God will show you the truth about your situation, the truth about our nation. Truth about what's happening in our midst right now, amen. And God said, These are signs of the times, amen. What the devil is doing, what the, where the world is going, but get my word. I'm saying, tell you where I'm going. I'm going cross green of the world, amen. If you get with me, amen, I will get you to the other side, amen. I will protect you, I will keep you, I will heal you, I will bless you, amen. I will call, call you to cross over to a new era of your life, but I plan the purpose from the foundation of the world, amen. So meditate. In my word, so it gets down to your heart. You got confidence, amen, that God is with you. He won't fail you, amen. He will be with you in trouble, and he will deliver you out of trouble. Meditate in it. Get in your mouth. Then he says this here. Observe to do according to all that's written therein. Now, you just can't you know, read the word and, and, and speak the word and not do the word. So you got to put it into practice. What the word says, amen. Every day, subscribe every day what you hear, what God shows you through the word, and what you're speaking. Make sure your actions are lining up with the word. And look what he says here when you do that. It says, Then you're going to make your way prosperous, and then you're going to have good success. And let's say, whether, well, God, but how about things are bad? God don't care how bad things are. God can make your way prosperous, have you good success in the midst of famine, in the midst of crazy stuff going on around you, amen. God, not, God's not limited. To what the world is doing, amen. God control his power, can subdue everything, amen. So God said, You do this part, you're gonna have you're gonna be very strong in your spirit, you're gonna be such courage, and you'll be able to face any danger because you know your God is with you, you know he won't fail you, you know he's gonna get you to the other side. So God said, This is how you get strength in your spirit, this is how you get uh, very courageous whenever you face danger, amen. Not running from it, but run to it, amen, and slay your giants, amen. Hallelujah, over to God. Now, once we do our part, then we will be ready to cross over to, to the other side into the new area, amen, the things that God planned for us. Once you do your part, amen, this is your part, amen, and I believe I said God is saying those who have prepared themselves, 
those who have done these things in their life, we're about to cross over to a new era. Amen. And that all we're seeing right now is just a sign of the devil getting crazy mad because he know he can't stop it. He's just trying to get fear to hopefully get you so you, you're turned back in the day of battle. Amen. But those who are, are courageous and confident are going to face them down because Joshua in the first generation, they, they took the first generation to go take the land took 12 spies in and the, to, to spy the land and they came back and they said, man, it's just like God said, but, 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 what? There are giants in the land and we can't, and we're, we're like grasshoppers in their sight and we, we can't do it. We can't. And Joshua said, hold on, whoa, wait a minute here. We are well able to take the land. Our God is with us. We, they're, they're bred for us. Amen. Let's go up and once they had, they, they had a strong and very courageous spirit. Amen. But they wouldn't listen to him. So now you see those who are in Joshua trained this next generation and they were leaders of the next generation. And that courage, amen, and that confidence, it came on them. They're ready. Let's, let's go and take this. So God's going to take people in, whether you're young, whether you're old. Amen. Uh, natural age has nothing to do with spiritual development. I know people, uh, they've been walking and been in church for 20 years, amen, and people have been saved for five years, but they're much more stronger and courageous because, what, they're meditating the word day and night. Uh, they're speaking the word and they're practicing the word and they're developed spiritually more so than people have been there for 30 years. And some are not going to go over because they're not doing their part and they're going to fail, amen? It's not God failing them. So God says, we're, we're about to move over. All this we're seeing right now is a sign. Amen. That God, we're about to pass over into a new era. Amen. And only the bold and the strong and the courageous are going to move over and face danger. Amen. And tackle and destroy their Goliaths. Amen. And possess that which God has planned and purpose for our lives. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at look at verse 10 of Joshua. Joshua um, 1 verse 10. Glory to God. I'm going to show you something here. <clears throat> then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the host, command the people, say, prepare you victuals for within three days, you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess. Now, now, now in three days, he said, three days, you're going to pass over this Jordan. Now think about this here. There are 40 years going around, you know, in, in, in the wilderness of preparation. You know, some they've made it longer, but it's a time of preparation. Like, man, sometimes the preparation is very long. It's not longer like God win because God wants to just shape your character more than amen, than, than get you a blessing, amen. So it takes time to develop our character and to teach us the ways of God. So preparation is not longer. But once that you're, you're prepared, the era of preparation is over, guess what's going to happen? The promises will begin to manifest at a faster, accelerated pace. That's what God is saying. So God is saying now that those who are, we're about to see an acceleration right now. Like I said last week, uh, we saw last week that, um, when, when Jesus uh, and Wednesday, when he got to the, he came in the boat in the midst of the storm. When he got in the boat, they accelerated at a speedy rate to the other side. Amen. Here's what Amos nine thirteen says this here. The time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested. Amos nine thirteen. The time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grace will grow faster than it can be harvested. In other words, God said, it's coming a time, I believe in this end time, that God's going to speed up what's called seed time and harvest. And I believe that, like I said before, the devil tried to delay what God is doing. And God said, okay, you're going to pay for this here. I'm going to accelerate, amen, the time of my blessings. People are just going to speed up your, your doors of opportunity, speeding up the blessings, speeding up, amen, the purposes of your life. It's going to be an acceleration so fast. It's going to happen so quickly. It's called the suddenlies in the Bible, amen. This is the era of which we're into the suddenness, the straight ways, the immediacy of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's going to take a long time. God is speeding things up because well, it's a short period of time left before He comes. He's got a lot to get done in a short period of time, so He's speeding things up. Amen. But you got to be prepared. You got to be bold. You got to be strong. You got to be very courageous. You must the word. It's got to be in you. It's got to be in your mouth. It's got to be in your actions. Amen. Glory to God. Unless you, because not you will turn back. In the battle, because dangerous times that in danger, your flesh will say run and hide. But my mind, those who got to know this is an opportunity. Let's go at once and take the land. They are bread for us. Glory to God. And God is with us. He will give us the land. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so awesome. And the book of Joshua is a book of conquest. You know, so you read it. You read the whole book of Joshua, like story after story of the children of Israel conquering their enemies and possessing the areas of land that God promised them. 
You know, they didn't take it all at once. They took it, but they began to take it. And they, it was like quickly, they would take one place of land. They would, they would seize it and they would get people, that um, group would have their land. They would fight another part. And it was a, over a period of years, they, after a while, they took everything that God said. But it, the wilderness period was so long, but the conquest was a, a very accelerated time. Amen. And God was with them. Angels were with them, fighting with them. God, one time, they were fighting so much, and God God got in, got involved with the battle with them so strong, and it was getting dark out there. They had no lights, electric, electricity like we do nowadays. And Joshua said, Lord, uh, Lord, they get in the way. Lord, let the sun stand still so we can beat our enemies up. And God calls the sun to stand still for 24 hours so Israel can beat the enemies down. So what it means is there's nothing that God will not do to help you to get into your plans and your purpose. If God got to call us a son to stand still to get you to your promise, he will do it. He said, I will not fail you. Amen. I won't forsake you. So you'll see examples of what God says. So you need to get courage. Amen. Get encouraged, not discouraged. Amen. Encourage that God is with you. Amen. He will do what he says. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not the that he should repent or change his mind on what he said to you. If he said it, glory to God, he will do it. If he spoke it, he will make it good in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me close up with this here. I'm going to close by reading uh, something from the end of the book of Joshua. In all the conquest, you, you know, at the end of the story, and you see something from the end of the story here. Uh, Joshua 21. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hopefully, hopefully you're taking notes today and and, and let this uh, get to your heart because this is a word for you if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, you give life to Jesus Christ. Get in on this. Amen. But this is a word from the Lord for his people in the midst of all this stuff we're seeing right now. Amen. God said, don't fear. I got a plan. Amen. Joshua 21. Let me, let me close with this here. Verse 43. Hallelujah. It says this here. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all the enemies before them. Remember he said, no man will stand before you. It happened like God said. The Lord delivered all the enemies into their hands. So God did what he said. They had to be courageous to step out and do so God can do his part. Then verse 45 says, it says this here. There failed not any of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel, all came to pass. So it says here that not nothing, nothing that God, no good thing that God spoke to them and promised them, none of it failed. All of it came to pass. So God is saying it's not me that's holding back. Amen. I'm about to move in. Those who are ready, who the, the, my word is in the heart, in the mouth, and the actions. Amen. Uh, you're about to pass over to a new area. So be brave. Amen. Be be courageous. Don't don't run from the enemies. Know that I'm with you. My angels are even though you can't see them, they are there around you. Glory to God. Waiting for you to get that word in your mouth. Because why the word in your mouth? When it's in your heart, out your mouth. The Bible says the angels they excel in strength as they hearken to the voice of the Lord God. So as you begin to speak the word of God, uh, one of the stories in, the, uh, in Joshua, the first piece of land it took was, was um, Jericho. And Jericho was, um, they were affordable walls so big and so wide, nobody can get through those walls. And like, how are we going to get over these walls here? And God said, I got a plan. I want you to uh, walk around these walls uh, for seven days. And the seventh day, I want you to go around seven times. And and on, at the end of the seventh day, I want you to shout. In other words, I want you to, uh, it, it might have been a word that God gave him to shout this word out of the mouth. And the word that God told him to shout, when that shout, they shouted, the Bible says the walls fell down flat like an elevator shaft. And I believe with all my heart that the angels were on that wall waiting for them. And when they, they're waiting for that word to come out their mouth, when the word came out their mouth, the angels pushed that thing right on down into the ground. And God is saying the same thing here. Keep my word in your mouth. Hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering. Amen. My angels are moving on your behalf. Amen. Keep it in your mouth. Keep it in your actions. You're going to have, you're going to prosper. You're going to have good success right in the midst of all these things because what? You're moving. You're crossing over. We are crossing over right now into the midst of a new era. Amen. And the, you might see the storms. You might see the winds blowing. But be like Jesus Christ. Rest. He was on the pillow resting. I mean, on, and what the father said, that the God would get him to the other side. Rest. And if you need to step up and speak the word of God, the word of peace out of your mouth, speak what God says. And that peace in your heart, amen, will cause that storm to cease. Amen. And you'll find yourself getting quicker and faster to the other side of your promise. Amen. God is good.
His mercies are everlasting. Hope, hopefully you got blessed by this word today and it came out of your in your life, amen, because God wants to take you to a new level in your life, amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed in the Lord. Don't get discouraged. Be strong and have a good courage for the Lord. Your God is with you wherever you go, amen. God bless you. Have a smile upon you, amen. Amen. Praise his name. God is good.